Okay, so I'm getting started on the 69 Mustang right now, the Mach 1. Um, there's a peak of it. Um, I picked up a roll of uh, this plastic guard for the fenders. Um, actually, I use it, I've used it in a couple cars. I used it on the black truck. Used it on 68. Either way, if I'm gonna be working with fluids or potentially getting greasy, um, I just got a roll of it. Actually, they sent me like a 36 inch roll and I just chucked it up in my lathe. We can go over and take a peek at the lathe. And uh, yeah, chucked it up in the lathe and used a uh, window knife to uh, just cut it in half. Buzz right through it, no worries. So yeah, 36 inches is too long. It covered the tires and everything. Too difficult for one person to put on. It was easy for two people to put on. Not so easy for one person. So uh, if you do decide to use something like that, it can't be on the fenders for more than about two or three weeks. Take it off, the adhesive will, uh, they say, I've never seen it happen, but they say the adhesive, and it's not really any, any adhesive on it, it's just sort of a, a static connection, but there's, some, some, there's something on there. But either way, it doesn't stick super hard, but it, protects the car so that's cool um and also wipe the fenders down real good with uh um not a wax but some sort of a waterless cleaner uh okay so this car came in originally for uh just complete the project and uh when i saw the car originally it was um in the guy's garage super nice garage nice pad uh great working conditions but it was just on jack stands with no tires on it, no suspension. And he cobbled together the front suspension. It's all Hotchkiss, it's real nice. And just uh, to make it roll, got it here. Um, wasn't even close, Brian, just so you know. Uh, wheels are not supposed to be pointed out like that. But either way, I got the suspension together. I put a steering gear box in it. It's down there. Uh, Borgensen power steering box. I gotta route the uh, power steering lines and mount the pump. But I figured today, while it's on the lift, I will um, do the brake lines, get that all sorted out, pull out all the wheels. The way they have the brake lines set up is really not acceptable. Put a couple of inserts right here for you to see. But um, as I move forward, I pull out the master cylinder, which was a bear, just because they dimpled the shock tower sort of in the wrong place. I don't know if that even will focus, there it is. So the master cylinder was actually laying on that dimple right there. So that needs to be massaged and fixed. And uh, I noticed something rattling here. None of the bolts to hold the proportioning valve to the bracket were tight. None of the brake lines, they were snug, but they weren't tight. And then I don't know what this is all about, but you know what? I'm not gonna go crazy on that, but this is not cool. I don't know what that coil of wire is all about. Um, so basically, uh, if you get projects like this, if you decide to start helping your friends out, don't leave anything like that wrong. I mean, double check, triple check. But either way, it's like, so, I mean, that's kind of the standard for projects like this. People bring stuff in and it's just gonna be a quick wiring job, uh, uh, FYI 69. Mustang, it's never a quick wiring job. It's a whole dash out major uh, build. But uh, you think it's gonna be one thing, it ends up being you know five other things. I noticed that uh, like no part of the wiring I can use. I can use the harness, but I'm gonna take it all apart, lay it all out, reroute it, put it back in correctly. You can't just stuff wires through a hole in the firewall and call that done. Uh, that's not cool. Um, wires laying everywhere. Uh, routed, just unsafe spots. It might work, fire the car up, get it out of the shop, but you gotta think about the future. Someone's gonna wanna drive this car for years to come. Um, yeah, not cool to drive. Something else I noticed is trans cooler mounted uh, right against AC condenser. I give that 2,000 miles before something starts leaking. And AC condenser mounted to core support I mean, what, four inches away from the radiator or the fan? That will generally make the pressure 
inside the AC compressor, the manifold, on the back of the AC compressor, the pressure gets so high, it will just blow off all the Freon into the atmosphere, cutting a hole in my ozone layer, and more importantly, preventing the air conditioning from blowing cold. So, even though it looks like it's all together, no part of that is cool. So I'll be moving the AC condenser directly in front of the radiator, maybe give it half inch. And then uh, if we use the same trans cooler, looks, looks like it was a good one back in the day, maybe it'll clean up. I will uh, mount that in a position that uh, works better. Um, anyway, that's the progress upgrade update. Anyway, that's the progress update on the 69 Mach 1. Um, yeah, if you're taking a job like this, be prepared for the unexpected. Like, who would have thought um, wiring turned into complete, I mean, it's going to be complete. Suspension, doing rear leafs, Hotchkiss in the front, new brake lines, new fuel lines. Uh, only thing I'm not doing is pulling the motor because we're putting a different transmission in it. So yeah, it's going to be a big project. All right, you guys. Thanks a lot. More progress to come. See ya. Okay, so we are back on the 69 Mach 1. Um, today's target is to get it sitting on the ground at the stance that the customer wants. He's already provided me with some new parts. We got some lowered rear leaf springs, some Alton American shocks, and some Hotchkiss sway bars. We're gonna get those on. The Hotchkiss sway bars should be pretty sweet. Uh, front and rear, and the front already has full Hotchkiss suspension. The Wilwood brakes is gonna complement all that real well. Um, yeah, there's plenty of work to do this thing. I gotta do brake lines complete. I've already done the differential, but plumbing to the front, uh, fuel lines, fuel system, cool, it, just tons of stuff. A bunch of stuff is getting redone, but it's gonna turn out pretty cool. And uh, today, let's get this stance set up, get this thing on the ground, see what it looks like. So as I walk around and look underneath here, I see the leaf spring bolts are loose in the front, which is a good sign. Um, there's the plumbing I did yesterday. This thing had a flex line across the rear end. Um, and those clamp-on brackets to hold the uh, adapters. Um, today I'm going to run over to Earl's and have them uh, crimp up a couple of, oh, I don't know, 8-inch, 10-inch lines to go from the caliper to there. And also another, say, 14 inch to go from the T fitting over to the hard line that I still need to install. Um, but for right now, let's get the rear end apart. I like to do one side at a time, swapping out the springs. That way, the rear end doesn't want to tilt like that. If you take out all four U bolts, then start to take one out. If you have pole jacks on either side, the rear end will snap one way or the other. So, not always cool. So, I'll swap out the springs real quick, and uh, then we'll get those Alden Americans on here.
take off the take the weight off the differential or off the spring by just lifting the differential. Tech tip, remember to put some lubricant on these bushings when you install them, otherwise they will squeak. There's no lubricant on these. And they were a little bit difficult to get out. So, that's why. spring right there. A little bit heavy, but here's a easy trick. If you have a brake stool handy, We have a heavy duty shackle kit here from Energy Suspension. I think it's part of the kit from Hotchkiss. Let's see if there is some. There it is. There's a little anti squeak right there. This stuff, invaluable. It's a mess. Get it on you, it doesn't come off very easy. But just a little bit is all it takes. Put just a little bit around the edge before I install it in the frame. Which I did.
Okay. Now, people will forget this part. A little bit around these. Collars that actually go inside these new shackle bushings. I actually have some monster channel locks. Where the heck are they? Oh, you know what? They're in the other corner. They're in the other box. But I have some semi monster ones here. that to crush the entire bushing on both sides with the collar in the middle. Now use it to crush these together. And put a collar in there. That's handled. Now we have new hardware and new shackles. And these are monsters. I don't see any worshers in there. So that is the trick. You have a limited amount of space between the quarter panel and the where the bushing mounts. So put the collar in all the way through. It's almost coming out the other side. Gives you enough room to get the longer bolt through. Then once it's in, you just move it back. Yes, sir. Yeah, customer ordered this heavy duty stuff. I like it. So that's handled now. This collar is in, the bushings are in. Yeah, because it is lower, the rear end has to go up higher. There'd be more room on the bottom. Alright. I think the other way to put these bolts in will be remove the gas tank. As I look around over here and see that the tank is kind of. No, actually, that won't even do it. Removing the gas tank. Won't make it possible to put the bolts in because there's a, still a piece of the floor reinforcement right there that prevents it from clearing. But if I did it, it's possible. Also, too, is they didn't give you a lot of extra bolts here. They give you just enough bolt for this to engage. All right. I thought this 
down. Once you let it down, you gotta move it around to the alignment dowel, locks in. That side's holding it. There it is. Now we have some new U bolts and hardware. down this road before. Anvil. Okay, everything I did over there, I did over here. I haven't done the shocks yet because you have to take them uh, loose from the inside. Seems I gotta lower the car. I don't want to lower the car, I want to get the wheels on and see what it looks like. I'm not very patient. Either way, this spring's installed, new bolts, everything's all hooked up. So, uh, man, let me take some stuff out of the way. And get some tires on it and drop it down. These are not the tires that are going on it when it's done. These used to be on it. 
And the customer says he's going to get some different ones. Three lug nuts, more than enough. Okay, so that is a wrap on this little cream puff. The 69 is sitting just right. When it settles down about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch, you get some more meat under that thing, it will be perfect for cruising. Thanks a lot for checking out the video. Don't forget to subscribe, share, tell a friend, uh, smash that like button, uh, hit the notifications, ring the bell, do whatever you do. Stay safe out there. See you next time.